Hi and welcome to a lesson on number patterns. Now we're going to look at number patterns and um, it's actually something you've done before I'm sure but let me just give you an example of a number pattern. Now a number pattern can be considered as a sequence of numbers and we're actually going to refer to it more as sequences but a sequence of numbers that we can that has the property that we can predict what future numbers might be what the next number in the sequence might be now for here I can see okay here to go from 11 to 15 and again from 15 to 19 to have done this each time I am adding 4 plus 4 plus 4 so it's definitely possible for me to predict the next numbers in this in this sequence so the number 23 then 27, and then 31, etc. Now there are four things in number patterns that we are going to explore. Okay? Four elements. The first is called the term value. Term value. Now the term value just represents or me, what we mean by that is just a value that we find in a certain position. So in other words, this value is 15. So the second term value is 15. This value is 23. And how we're going to represent that is we can say term value, the second term value is 15. The fourth term value, in other words, term 4 is 23. So term value is literally the value that we find at a certain position. And now let's just define that position. So we have term position. Now term position I think explains itself. It's just, just the position at which we find each term. So for example, 19 is in the third position. He comes third. 27 came fourth. 11 was first. So the term position or the term number can also be the term number. We usually use an N to represent the term number. And when we have an N, we're not specifying which term we're talking about. Then N would be the general. N would be general. One would be the first. Two would re represent the second and so forth. Okay. The next thing we're looking at is the general term. Now the general term refers to a formula that can calculate any term value. And all we'll need is the term number. Let's look at an example. For example, I can have It's usually written like this. It's a formula and it starts with Tn. And that formula can be, let's say, 7n minus uh, 2 divided by 4n. So n represents the term number. So when I look at term, the first term, I'll have to replace n with a 1. That's what we've done. We've replaced n with a 1. So t1 means I replace everything with the, everywhere where there's an n with a 1. So 7 times 1 minus 2 divided by 4 times 1 is equal to 7 times 1 minus 2 gives me 5 over 4. How about T2? 
Usually they'll ask you to find the first three terms. So we're going to go all the way up to three. Now n is two. Seven times two is fourteen. Fourteen minus two is twelve. Divided by four times two, which is eight. So twelve over eight. And if we simplify that, we see three can divide into, and uh, four can divide into both of them three times, and two times. Three over two. And the third term gives me 7 times 3 minus 2 over 4 times 3. You see, to find the third term, or if I wanted to find the hundredth term, I would have just replaced n with 100. Okay, so 7 times 3 is 21 minus 2 over 4 times 3 is 12. 21 minus 2 is 19 over 12. And there I found term 1, term 2, and term 3. The third thing, or sorry, the fourth thing actually, that is important that we need to go and work out, is called the identifier. Now I'm writing cursive. Okay, the identifier. Not identified. Identifier. The identifier represents... Um, how am I actually getting the next term? So if we look at this top number pattern, we saw that we were adding a 4 every time. But we might as well have had 3, 6, 12, 24. And in this one we see how are we getting the next term? We are multiplying with three, sorry, with two every time to get the next term. Okay? And there are three different ways that we're going to study, or three different identifiers that we are going to look up at. The one is a constant difference. That means if I take two terms, two consecutive terms, terms following um, on top of each other, and I subtract them as I have here. If I subtract consecutive terms, then I see 15 minus 11 is 4. 19 minus 15 is 4. My difference is constant. And this will be called an arithmetic sequence. We'll call that an arithmetic sequence. But we can also have a constant ratio. Now, constant ratio will be called that now when a ratio means a fraction. That means I would have taken the second example I gave you. This one, 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. 12 divided by 6 gives me 2. 24 divided by 12 gives me 2. I see I've got a constant ratio. And that is going to be called the geometric sequence. And then finally, we are going to have a constant second difference. Now, the second difference just means that my first difference, the first time when, I, when I'm trying to look for a constant difference, I don't find a constant difference. But I notice that if I subtract it again, I find a constant second difference. Now we'll look at some examples later on, don't worry if you're confused at this point. You will understand a little bit later, but that will be called a quadratic sequence. And that is an introduction to number patterns. Next up, we're going to look at the arithmetic sequence. Good luck, enjoy!